The headlines read, Crisis, Financial Cliff, Urgent, Raise the Debt Ceiling, Government Shutdown, Kick the Can Down the Road, Face that the U.S. and indeed the world is financially ill. Many say that financial issues are the number one problem in the country today. Would it surprise you to know that by most measures, money problems are also the leading cause of stress, abuse, divorce, depression, and even suicide. None of these are laughing matters, but sometimes a little humor helps deal with the unpleasant reality and put things in perspective. For instance, would you believe my wife's purse was stolen the other day? It had all of her credit cards in it, and I was going to report it, but I saw that the thief was spending less than she was. I heard a comedian say that money is not the most important thing in the world. Love is. Fortunately, I love money. A cartoon I saw recently showed two friends at a fast food restaurant. One said to the other, you give me your burger and I'll give you back half a burger. That's a 50% return. In a Peanuts cartoon, Snoopy was writing a letter where he said, Dear IRS, I'm writing you to cancel my subscription. Please remove my name from your mailing list. Oh, wouldn't that be sweet? A thief broke into my house last night. He was searching everywhere for money. So I woke up and started to search with him. Will Smith, the actor, observed that too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't even like. There was a time when they said, a fool and his money are soon parted. Now it happens to everyone. Personally, I have a real struggle giving my hard-earned money to someone who calls themselves a broker. Financial health and well-being are defined as informed decision-making and learning how to save, invest, and use credit wisely and plan for the future. Boy, that doesn't sound much like our government today, does it? Today's society runs on debt, but if there is one thing that is grinding and discouraging and even disheartening, it is to have debts and obligations that one can't meet. They can negatively impact your health every bit as much as poor diet or lack of exercise. So stay out of debt. What's interesting is that good financial principles are surprisingly simple and unsophisticated. There are some common reasons that people seem to live beyond their means, like lack of a financial plan, which takes into account marketing changes, inflation, and interest rates, greed, and lack of self-control, trying to keep up with the Joneses, and I know this, the Joneses do not want to be kept up with. Let me share with you something that I've noticed, and that's that most purchases are emotionally made and intellectually rationalized. Confusing wants with your needs, and then stress. When people are under stress, they tend to want to spend more. What's interesting is that good financial principles, as I mentioned, are surprisingly simple and unsophisticated. So here's a few ways to prepare financially for your future. Establish savings for education, retirement, and emergencies with six months living expenses as the recommended minimum. It's hard to have a bad day when you have a good amount of cash at your disposal. It just makes good dollars and cents, if you know what I mean. Carry adequate insurance coverage, including health, disability, and life insurance. And shop wisely. Shopaholics are as out of control as alcoholics. I've read that people who use credit cards spend an average of 20% more than those who use cash. So only use a credit card when you have the money in the bank to pay it off that month. People who shop at malls spend an average of 20% more than those who don't. You can always find something neat to purchase by grazing through the mall. So make a list before you go, only buy what's on the list, and then leave. Establish a margin of mastery and build a financial reserve. If you can afford a Mercedes, buy a Volvo. If you can afford a BMW, buy a Toyota. If you can afford a large home with a 30-year mortgage, buy a smaller home with a 15-year mortgage. If you can afford a home with a $1,500 per month payment, get one with a $1,200 payment. You can pay off debt, invest, and save the difference for a more secure future. Now let me give you some of the best financial advice I've ever heard. The surest way to double your money is to fold it over and put it in your pocket. It also is the surest way I know to avoid your own personal crisis and financial cliff. So here's to your financial health and well-being.